having a mid-morning snack of Tommy Toes out here in the garden. This is a little variety called Matt's Cherry, and it just reseeds itself every year for us. Really sweet and great, but really small, so hard to do anything with out of other than eat them out of, out of hand. But this time of the year when the garden's really dying back and uh, you know fall's not far away, is when I start thinking about saving seeds. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, I'm by no means an expert about saving seeds, but today I just wanna share with you a few things that I've done over the years that worked really well for me. So when it comes to saving seeds, there's some that are so easy to save. And then there's others that's kind of a little bit more difficult. And then if you do a research, if you do research and you should, uh, if you're gonna be a seed saver, you'll find a lot of information um, about like cross-pollination. So like for tomatoes, I don't typically save my tomato seeds because I have to grow them in such a small area. Like I have might have Cherokee purples right beside my mountain princess. And they're one of the ones, tomatoes are something that, that really does easily cross-pollinate. So I don't usually try to save them. However, I do have good luck saving the seeds from Tommy toes, from small tomatoes. Another thing that will easily kind of cross pollinate is pepper. So again, my peppers are really, really close together because I don't have much, much um, space. So I typically don't, don't save them either. If you do save either one, like, so if I save the tomatoes, here's a good example. So like I said, the Tommy toes typically would bear this same fruit. Obviously these I didn't plant, they just fell off and they reseeded themselves and come up from last year and the year before and the year before that. But like, for instance, I have a larger little tomato, a yellow tomato called cream and sausage. And I grew it, I got it, I don't even know, like maybe 15, 16 years ago. And we loved it. And I grew it every year and I saved the seeds and I'd grow it the next year. It did great all those years. And then suddenly, it wasn't last year, I think it was year before last, I planted some. Well, it started when the tomatoes started forming. I thought, that's not a cream and sausage, what is that? It was more of a, type, a redder tomato, a bigger type. It was different. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, I couldn't say that it was like one of my Cherokee purples or Mountain Princess or anything like that. It was just some weird shaped red blob. It tasted okay though. So that's one way to look at it is that even if you don't, it just wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't a cream and sausage. So a lot of times, even though you don't get the exact fruit, the exact tomato or pepper that you want, you would get something edible and a lot of times that's over the years, that's kind of how people develop new varieties and strains of stuff. But to be truly true, to be true to the original fruit, if it's something that's easily cross pollinated like that, you need to isolate it. So people, for instance, that sell, you know, pure Cherokee um, purple tomato seeds that we love, they have isolated them way far away from anything else that they grow. So, and like I said, I'm by no means an expert, so you need to research. It's really fascinating when you start looking and, and, and um, listening to all of it and at listening to other videos or reading research about it. It's all fascinating. To me, the most fascinating thing though is like these little tomatoes that just fall on the ground and then, you know, winter comes and there might be snow. There's definitely, I disturb the beds because I clean them out. And next year we'll likely put more compost on the beds. Through all that, somehow that little seed just lays there through all the winter, the cold, the rain, the snow, whatever happens. And then next year it decides it's gonna grow. So it's just that those seeds really want to grow. They really do. So that's the part that really amazes me about seeds and about seed saving. And that's probably kind of my favorite way to save seeds is like the ones that will volunteer for me next year. So when it comes to saving some of the things I do save, like cucumber seeds, if you do your own research, you'll you'll find out that most people say that you should leave it, leave the cucumber or whatever it is on the vine and let it fully mature. Like you wouldn't want to take the little bitty cucumber and save seeds from it. Although you never know, it might work. But so you want to let it fully mature and kind of turn yellow. And if you think about the the plant, whether it's you know, the actual plant or the fruit, it's all together, they're all the same family. Their main goal in life is to produce that fruit or the, whether it's a cucumber or a tomato or whatever, and then th go on to produce more. They want to, they want to grow. They want to have their children, in other words, their seed children. So with cucumbers, 
or anything like that. You know, you think, well, if it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing it, or a squash or anything like that and growing and growing, it, what would happen? Well, it would eventually just decay and then those seeds would spill out onto the ground and then they would lay there like my little Matt's cherry tomato that I've eat all of them now. And then it would sprout next year. So it would continue its life. So most of the time, if you research, folks will say that you should let your, if like this cucumber I'm gonna show you, you should let it go to seed almost. You should leave it on the vine until it's mature, until it kind of starts turn yellow. And then you can start to begin to harvest your seeds. So this is a cucumber that I've left growing. This was a silver slicer. I really love those cucumbers. And so now I'm gonna show you how you would actually get the seeds out of it. I'm just gonna do it out here in the garden. Uh, boy, it's a big one too. And it's beginning to get soft on the end. So we're just gonna cut him in two here. And so then when you open it up, you see how many cucumbers, I mean, how many seeds. That's another amazing thing about it is that this, oh, and it smells so good. This one plant, I mean, this one cucumber, look how many seeds I could have for next year. Isn't that wonderful? So seeds like cucumbers and tomatoes and peppers, those kind of wet kind of things, they have like a little slimy thing on the outside of them. So you need to get that off before you dry them. So what you would do is, I've got me a little thing of water here that I brought from inside. If I can find a place to sit it, maybe, or it won't turn over is you just scrape them out and then drop them out into that water. So once they're in the water, you can kind of see the stuff that surrounds them there. So then you would leave this, I'm gonna get all the seeds in here, but then you would leave this on your kitchen counter for oh, two or three days maybe, maybe not even that long. And then that stuff will kind of fall off and go to the, I mean, they will separate. In other words, the, the little slimy stuff will kind of separate from the seeds. And then you can drain this, rinse off the seeds and then lay them out to dry. Now, some people lay them, and I have lots of times in the past, lay them on paper towels to dry. What happens is they kind of stick to the paper towel which I don't try, it, that's okay with me because I figure if you're the little paper towel is kind of like mulch when you plant the seeds and I've still had good luck with it. But you can also pour them out like on parchment paper, wax paper, or pour them out on a um, just a tray and just kind of stir them through every once in a while and then they will dry, air dry that way. And then once they're completely dry, you just store them for next year in a cool, you know, dark place. And mostly when you know you think cool dark place do you mean the basement or something like that no i actually just mean away from sunlight so even in your like i keep my seeds in my kitchen plenty of light in there but i put them you know of course they're inside and i would put these in an envelope and have them for next year we'll push those off down in there this will be a lot of seeds for next year Cucumber smells, even though it's really big and probably tougher, it still smells so good. Once I finish getting the seeds out, I'm gonna take the cucumbers over to the chickens and they'll, they'll enjoy this one for sure. They love them, especially if you go ahead and cut them open and that way they can easily get down in there. And then in a couple of hours, you'll come back and the only thing will be left is the skin. They eat it all. I love cucumbers too, though. Looks like I've got something else along with my seeds in there. Piece of bark. So this is our, our wonderful Malabar spinach that I love so much. And you can see the seeds on it are these, let me break a little piece off. Woo, I just dropped one. So there's these little black, black, black things. So you can take those in and lay them out in a, in a tray and let them dry. Since I've been planting the Malabar spinach, it kind of really nicely reseeds itself. And you can see though, when you look at the, all this, I mean, it, you can see why, because how many seeds it produces. Really pretty though. They had to have that purple. You see there's some purple on my hand, but little purple in there, kind of like the, the vine that actually grows. Makes me wonder if you could use it for dye, Corey. Probably. But very pretty. 
But so that one's a really easy one to save. I grow nasturtiums every year and the seeds are super easy to save from them. You can see where these are, this one's kind of died back and it's kind of coming back out up here, but look what it's left behind. Can you see all these little, kind of looks like peas or something, all those little things. Those are seeds, all those are seeds. So you can just come through, pick them, lay them out on a towel to dry inside and then, you know, plant them next year. I hope I didn't just throw one, I don't think I did. And so that's, they are super, super easy. To, to get the seeds from them. I recently learned that they're actually edible too, just like the leaves are, and the flowers, and the stems. Pretty much everything on the nasturtium is edible. Now, it's people say that it's way better to harvest your seeds when it's, you know, you think about them drying, and you can probably see how wet it is outside because this is early morning. So it is a good idea to do it in the, in the sunshine, but that's not what I'm doing today. But these will still be okay. We'll lay them out where they can dry good inside the house and make sure they're okay. We had rain last night. I'd already scheduled that I wanted to uh, to do this today. And then we had some rain come in, which was nice. Oh, look at these little tiny baby ones. But if you do it, of course, in the sunshine when it's dry outside, then part of your drying is already done for you. Mine will kind of be behind the behind on that part, but that'll be okay. So I grew a lot of sunflowers this year, just for beauty, not really to use to eat or anything, but you can see what birds have been eating them. They love them. And because I've grown them for several years, they kind of reseed themselves too. But you can see if you wanted to keep their seeds right there, you can see their, we could pull some of those out. Whoops, I dropped that one. You can, so there's a few of the seeds. So if you wanted to save them for next year, um, you certainly could. I love to let the birds, the birds just have a heyday back here in my backyard where they're at. If you look at all of them, you can see most of them have been eaten by the birds. You see the bees working the zinnias. Now the flowers are the easiest of all to save seeds from. You can see this one down here, how it's kind of totally, I'll break it off totally dried out. Well, once you break that open, you can see there's all the little, there's all the seeds. So you can cut off like deadhead, cut off these blooms and take them and lay them somewhere until they dry um, completely. Make sure they're dry and then put them in a, in a bag or an envelope for next year. You can also use my method, which is I do that because I, if I want to save them to put somewhere else, but I also do this. <laughs> and then hope they come up next year. And a lot of times that works. Right here beside the zinnias is a, some cosmos, so the same thing. Right there you can see there's one that's that's dried up and, and dead, and then if you open the little pieces, you can see the seeds in there. That wasn't really a good one. Let's try this one and see. So down there you can see the seeds in there. This one's not fully dry, but you can tell it's the same as the, as the zinnia there. So you would save those and then plant them again next year. Here's a Cosmo that's drier than that previous one. So then you can see the, see the little seeds. So what I like to do if I'm saving flowers, other than the just throwing them, is that I would save the little, little tops and take them in and let them, let them dry until they're really dried up and shriveled. And then I just leave them like that. I put them in a bag. And then next year when I'm planting them, I just kind of break them up and as I go and plant the whole thing. So with marigolds, you would wait again. That one's not ready yet, but you can see it's beginning to dry. So they would dry and they kind of, kind of resemble kind of like this, except dried. That's one that's not bloomed yet and kind of taller. So again, once you break them open, they are really long seeds, so they're really easy to see, easy to save and easy to see. So this one is called Love in the Mist, and again, you can see how, how dry the, the bloom has gotten, and then when you open it up, you can see all those wonderful little seeds there, all those black seeds. And it's a really pretty, really pretty plant. And they will reseed themselves often too, so I'm gonna throw those down. Right beside it is a poppy. There's none blooming right now, but again, the same thing, the bloom will turn into a seed pod, kind of a, a, a round, funny looking seed pod, and then inside it is all the seeds. 
So I have nasturtiums in the front here too, but look at this one. This is like a variegated leaf nasturtium, real pretty bloom, kind of similar to the one in the back, except maybe lighter. But look at those leaves, aren't they just amazing? So pretty. So if you watch my videos, you'll know this year I was disappointed that I had no pumpkins. And then all of a sudden I noticed two little small pumpkins. I thought, okay, well maybe they'll, you know, maybe I'll get at least one little pumpkin before fall of the year and cold weather. But look what has happened. It is such a surprise. My little pumpkin turned into a big pumpkin. So of course it's really green right now, but I'm hopeful that it will have time to ripen before cold weather. So the other one I noticed at the same time, it's still small, it's still little. So, but maybe it'll grow. Maybe it'll grow like the other one just took off like crazy. So I've had good luck saving squash seeds, uh, pumpkin seeds, think winter squash is what I'm talking about. Winter squash, like butternuts and uh, kushaws and pumpkins and stuff. And they're kind of like you would do them at like kind of like we did the cucumber. You could put them in some water and let them ferment for a day or two and then lay them out to dry. Of course, you can also eat them. They're wonderful. But one of my, something's happened to one of my green and white kushaw. So, and it's already busted open. I don't know if an animal got into it or what, but I'll show you and it's easy to see the seeds. So you can see the seeds there. And they do have that gelatinous, gelatinous stuff on them just from being inside. Even if this one hadn't, this one's kind of rotted, but even if it hadn't. And so that's how you would save them too. And I've had really good luck doing that. Just like I did the cucumbers, kind of washing them off good and then laying them out to dry, drying them good, and then you saving them till next year. So when it comes to saving okra, it's pretty easy too. So you take your pot of okra, you just let it continue to grow till it gets really, really big, really tough. You know how okra will do if it gets long, it gets tough. And then once it kind of dries out on the, on the plant here, then you would cut it and take it in, take it on, you know, inside or whatever and cut it open. And you would not believe how many okra seeds are in one pot. It's really amazing. But that's, it's a pretty simple one to, to save the seeds from too. So another uh, thing that's easy to save, but I've never saved it, but I use my method of, I inadvertently use my method of just throwing them down is hosta seeds. So you can see here's all the seeds. Inside there's, I'm sure the little black things, uh, little black seeds. But what I do is I think these look ugly when they start, you can see when they start kind of the blooms gone and these are all that you've got it's hanging. So I cut them back and then what I do with them usually is throw them off the bank, throw them in the backyard, in the edge of the woods, edge of the yard. And what's happened over the years is they've produced more hostas for me. So I have even more hostas growing back there at the, at the edge of the yard. So another thing that's really easy to save the seeds from is a ground cherry. So this is a ground cherry plant here. And what happens is you can see these like these little lantern like type things. Once that falls off is when you know it's ripe. When it gets kind of papery looking and it'll, whoops, that one there it went. Eventually it'll fall off. And that's how you know that they're, they're ripe. Although that one is not, I knocked it off, it's green. So here's one that is ripe that's fell off. You can see how papery the, the outside gets and it's edible. I'm the only one in my family that actually likes them. I have a, vi a video about them I will link to so you can go learn more about them. But they are so easy to seed, to reseed themselves and to save the seeds that how I actually got them started here at my house and I have them everywhere now, like I didn't plant them in this bed, they just ended up here, is that my dear friend Jim Cassida, he sent me a box of them and he said, and eat them, enjoy them. He wanted me to know what they tasted like, but he said, take the rest of them and throw them in your yard and in your garden and you'll always have ground cherries. And you know, 10 or 12 years later, he was right. So if you know someone that has brown cherries, if you get them to give you just a little handful, you could do like I did and just literally, it was in the, probably in the end of the summer when I did that, I just went outside and threw them down and then they come up the next year. And then since then they've spread all around the house. So hopefully if you have a friend who has them, you could ask them for a few. You can also buy them of course from seed companies. So some of the easiest things to save seeds from is beans, think green beans, uh, and also peas, different kinds of peas. 
So when they, you let the pod kind of dry on the vine, you can see this one's pretty dry. And then it's as simple as shelling out those wonderful little peas or, or beans inside and then saving them for next year. So there's, that's some uh, Mississippi pink eye peas that I've saved for next year. And this is, I've already got rid of the hull, but this was some of my Cherokee trail bean that I tried this year. So this is some seeds from it that I'm saving. And there'll be more. So a lot of times the last picking of beans or peas that we do of the end of the season there, that's when we kind of leave some of those fuller beans. And you want the beans to be full because you want a big seed like that. We just leave them on the vine and then let them dry and kind of check on them, you know, every once a week or something like that until they're dried and they're full. And then you can, you can harvest and bring them inside. I still lay them out on something just to make sure after I get them out of the hole, just to make sure that they're completely dried before I store them. So as I said, I'm by no means an expert. I could learn lots about seed saving and I hope that you'll leave comments and share your knowledge. But it is something that I grew up around with my uh, parents, granny and pap doing, and then also that I've done that's, you know, found a few things that work for me. But one of my favorite memories with granny is, and she still does this today, so for instance, if the, like the Xena seeds that we, that we picked, uh, the Xena, dried out Xenas that we had from the plants up there, if we would walk around in the yard and she still does this today, she'll get her an old piece of mail, an envelope that something come in. And then as she gathers those seeds, she'll put them down inside that envelope. Then she'll, it's just a used envelope, you know, that the mail come in and then she'll fold it over and then she'll write on them, you know, Xenas. 2022 so that she'll know when, where the seeds come from and what they are. And then she'll just store them in the kitchen somewhere. Sometimes after they're dried out, she'll put them in the freezer. And then next year she's got them and she's ready to plant her new set of flowers or her cornfield beans or whatever it is. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how I save seeds, the few things that I do save seeds from here in the mountains of Appalachia. As I said, I'm by no means an expert, so I hope you'll leave comments and share any tips and tricks that you have. And as always, I hope you'll drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia.